Hello and good morning. We are in the second shop that this property has. My shop, this thing will fit in, but the front of the truck is basically touching the front of my garage. It's a big boy. This thing is also heated like mine. This is off the wood heat that we were talking about. So I just got this cranked up. We're gonna get it nice and toasty in here, defrost this truck out, and I'm gonna start doing my first tune-up ever on a diesel. I don't traditionally work on these because I've never owned one and they're just more complicated. And I've always just focused on gas, but we're gonna start to make myself familiar with the process of working on diesels with this truck. I love it a whole lot. It almost left me stranded the other night. It was, was missing, chugging along, and, and it wanted to die, and I got it home, and then the next morning I started it up and it didn't even want to run, it kept dying and stopped. I know it's getting colder, so these diesels you gotta leave plugged in or they just have a hard time starting. But it's also, it's always blown a, a bunch of blue smoke out of the back when you first start it up. And I think that's attributed to, to some glow plugs not really working and maybe some fuel injectors that aren't getting proper signal. And we're gonna show you why that is here in a little bit. I think the first step is let this thing heat up in here. Everything get toasty. I'm gonna come get my tools in All here. Right, so I got the driver's side all apart. Check the battery out. Disconnect the belt for the other side. Take a bunch of charge tubes up for the turbos. So there's a pipe that goes from here. Down to there, you gotta take off and then you gotta take the air filter. You can see the turbo sticking back there. You got a bunch of bolts, 13 millimeter, half inch. There's one that's kind of stuck behind there. You gotta use a wrench on, a little bit of fun. And uh, come here, come here, big guy. There you go. That's your inner valve train. These things are these diesels actually have electronics that go inside of the engine. So there's a plug right there that uh, feeds the injectors and the glow plugs. What I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna change the harness and I'm gonna pull the glow plugs out and change them on this side. This thing looks ridiculously clean for what it is. I am really I'm really impressed with this truck and the way it's been taken care of. We have the old glow plugs out of this thing. Now, you'll notice these things don't really look that old, right? There's part numbers clearly written on them. Let's see if this can give you some context. You can see these things aren't really that carboned up. A couple of them, you know, look, it's a bit of carbon on the tip, but these things don't look that old. So, this looks like it was possibly done recently. Now, I watched a couple videos on this thing when it started acting up and it seems like the problems that I'm having are the problems that, it's, that I'm experiencing are the problems that I'm looking at. I took this all apart and I inspected my harness here. I even cut some tape back because I wanted to make sure. My harness actually looks really good. I don't see anything that, what is that? Just a little bit of dirt, right? Yeah, I mean, there's some dirt in there or whatever, but I don't see anything that I would say is like really, that's good. And if you look here, uh, all of my plugs are actually pretty good. Maybe this far one might be looking like it's a little hot. At the back of it. But the problem I'm having is, look at this exposed wire right here. That's not covered wire. That's just, and, and it's looped back into the harness here. It goes right back in. I peeled as much of that harness as I could back just to see what was going on in there. And it goes all the way back. I don't know what to do with that, what this is. I'm gonna keep cutting away some harness and see if I can find some, where the, if that goes in a regular wire. Why is that bare? I have no idea. And I can't seem to find a video on this anywhere, so I think we're going in uncharted territory here. So I'm gonna keep searching for a little bit to see if I can find what the heck this is. And if not, I gotta, I gotta, I, either way, I'm gonna have to cut this harness away, I think, and figure out what that is. I don't think a bare wire, exposed wire, is just supposed to be next to this harness that's plugged in here, so. Welcome to live inside of an engine bay. So I got this wire harness pulled out a bit. I can tell that work has been done in here on this harness before. Just by the color of electrical tape that's on here, this red electrical tape is very telling that someone has been in this loom before. I mean, that right there is also very telling, that bare wire. So if I follow this down, it goes into this electrical tape, which is not factory either. So. Someone's been in here cutting and splicing and doing stuff to this harness at some point. I'm gonna have to unravel it, figure out where this wire goes, and then try and do a repair on it, because that is not gonna fly. So all the stuff that's on the shop floor is all this wiring harness that I just unsheathed. Here's where it starts, going into there. It's like a black with a yellow. Anyway, I'm gonna have to get a wiring harness diagram to figure out 
What the f this is? It's completely unsheathed. Who the hell did this? Why? I don't know how long this is gonna take me to fix. This is insane. How did this truck even- Okay, I just went through a huge education on this wiring harness. You can see I have it all apart. Here's that uh, crazy ground wire that is exposed and bare. I was showing you guys before. So believe it or not, that is actually how it was shipped from the factory. So this uses an ultra high frequency wire setup for the fuel injection system on here. And because of that, they don't want radio interference. And so they wrap those wires with a uh, uh, foil tape and then they wrap it again with a ground wire just to keep it quiet, I guess. I don't know if you guys have ever been in a car with a loud radio or a radio with a bad ground and it whines. You can see there's a lot of other electronics around it. These wires will actually interfere with some of your other electronics and sensors and stuff. I didn't know that at all. I just saw some bare wires and started freaking out. I'm still kind of glad I did this. You can see it's kind of a spaghetti mess right now. I'm gonna go through and figure out if there's any kind of wire damage. We're gonna, we're gonna do a lot of taping up right now. I might do some, some small wire repairs. Then we're gonna get this all reloomed and stuffed back in here and then I can finish putting on the gasket on this side and then start tearing into this side. Been kind of working on this all day, but it's been a slow process of me just taking it easy, not, not rushing and, and trying to learn as much as I can when I find a problem. Let's uh, bust out the electrical tape. I ran into the town and I'm very full supplies that I think I might need. So some foil tape. And... I have electrical tape around, but we're just gonna grab a random little roll, and then uh, uh, I'm gonna cover some of these wires in some heater hose when it's exposed, when I think it's getting close to heat or exposed to heat, so that to add a layer protection. So I got plenty of work to do for the next, I don't know, foreseeable future, so I better get busy. You know, I used to work on some of these big trucks back in the day, and we had a truck creeper, and this bull bar makes it really fun to get in here, but anyway, here's the start of what I'm doing. You can see it's nice and tin foil wrapped. Aluminum foil wrapped anyway. I'm gonna get the entirety of this rest of this harness wrapped. Take this wire right here and we're gonna wrap this thing all the way around this wire. And then I'm gonna wrap it back around with electrical tape. And then I'm gonna loom up everything in here. Uh, and then I'm gonna start putting everything back together and making sure I don't have any loom or anything gross in the valve cover train. So I should have covered that earlier, but I did not know that this was gonna be this extensive or that I had this much to learn. So here we are. Okay, this thing's officially got a tin foil hat on. Call this thing a conspiracy theorist. It's got so much foil on it. Got it pretty wrapped all the way down there, all the way up here. So next is taking this wire, wrapping it all around, getting it evenly spaced, and then going over it with some electrical tape and then looming it up. Pretty much done for the night. I got the burning. All wrapped up. I got the new valve covers in, new valve cover gaskets, excuse me, and I got this all rewrapped and taped up for the most part. I still gotta tuck it, and you know, there's a few plugs that I gotta figure out in the morning. So here's the old one. None of these are really crusty. I don't even know if any of them were bad. It's just that, well, this is China on the harness, so that's probably not what you wanna see. Who knows what was going on here? Ah! be about the same so anyway still gotta replace the fuel filter there's a pressure sensor fuel pressure sensor that i did not replace here there's a fuel pressure sensor right there and this one isn't really leaking oil that i can tell okay so we are uh pretty much almost done with this diesel tune-up you can see i got the passenger side all back together i got the harness all tucked back in there and plugged in for the most part i still have to plug in this end right here and then I gotta wrap that other end with a little bit of three quarter inch heater hose, get the belts back on. One of the last things I'm doing is I pulled this, this IPS or IPC sensor. This is an injector pressure sensor. You can see, I don't know if I can get light down there, but anyway, you can see that it's wet with oil. And as soon as these things start to leak, they're pretty much bad. This thing has uh, more than enough miles to warrant putting a new one on here. So, so the last thing we're gonna do is just throw another one right down into that hole, tighten it up, plug it in put a little plumbing on the backside of this. We'll uh, do the last of the repair to this wiring harness and we'll see if I can get it started. This truck is eating Steven. Would you look at that? It's running much, much better. Still got quite a bit of blue smoke out of here. If any of you guys know what might be causing that, I know it's got an upgraded four inch exhaust on there. But yeah, you can see, look at it.
As it heats up, that goes away. But when she's cold, she chops quite a bit. Can we check engine lights on? No, just an ABS light. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna take this thing to a gas station in a little bit. I think right now I'm just gonna let it warm up and park it. And then hopefully tonight she runs better than she's been running, we'll see. Uh, you like this at all if you learned anything i know there's plenty of 73 uh diesel videos out there but this is my first trip with one so if you're kind of new to these maybe it can help you out my fall you can you never know anyway like and subscribe if you if you learned anything or you found this entertaining at all and uh, we'll see you in the next video thank you